This is the 2023 Velar and it's just a facelift. The mantra really seems to be if it ain't broken, why fix it? On the surface of it at least, you'll have to look really hard to find the changes. Bigger changes are on the inside, but let me show you what the changes on the outside are first. Look closer and you will see that there is a new grille design. Slim pixel LEDs have replaced the matrix LEDs and there is a new DRL signature. The there's a rear bumper that's slightly different with the skid plate in body colour and the reflectors which are horizontal instead of vertical. There's a new trim element on the bonnet like the ones on the sides and the alloys have a new design. Apart from that, it's hard to tell the difference. Honestly, that doesn't matter because the Velar was and still is a very handsome car. Now, while the changes on the outside are minimal, the theme on the inside is minimalistic. As you can see, they've done away with all the physical buttons over here. That rotary dial for the terrain response system that used to be in the center is gone. Gone is that second screen. Instead, there is this one 11.4 inch curved display. And when I say curved, I don't mean curved this way. It's curved that way and it works very well on the go. I'm going to tell you about that later. But the idea is to make everything functional and very simple. Everything happens at touch in this cabin. Even your terrain response, it's off this screen now, so your modes are right there. Uh, Aircon controls, volume controls, everything is off the screen. Of course, the driver has his own set on the steering wheel as well for volume control. And of course, all the instruments as well. The instrument cluster itself, very clear, very crisp and easy to read, nice sharp graphics on it as well. Now the thing is, because of the screen and the doing away with the physical buttons, there's space that's opened up in the central console and that space gives you a wireless charging pad that's right here. Uh, there's a little bit of storage and of course the 12 volt socket. You have cup holders here in the middle and of course that storage bin which can be open in two split halves with the USB chargers on the inside as well. So yes, a functional, simple interior. And as far as features go, um, you have a, quite a few more as well. You have air purification system, which is now in this car, which means it clears particulate matter. So nice fresh air in the cabin. The good news is on this screen, you also have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. As you can see, I have connected my wireless CarPlay onto this system. Um, you also have that handy 3D camera, which gives you a great view around the car. You also have air suspension, which can be adjusted to various heights. And that can be done off the uh, same terrain response system control. So you have normal off-road and then you have access height which is very convenient because it lowers the car so that you can get in very easily. So a host of features in this car, but let's take a look at the full list. The seats are super comfy and they have massage functions. They're ventilated as well. The materials look top-notch all around the cabin. Well, it's time for me to get going, so I'm just going to put it into drive. All that's left on this central console now is that gear lever. And this central console, while I'm talking about it, um, looks very nice, looks like wood, but it does feel a bit plasticky. Now, time to get going, but before I do, if you do enjoy watching our videos, do remember to hit that like button because it makes us feel good when we know that you are enjoying those videos and the only way for us to know it is when you hit that like button. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to the Autocar India channel. See you on the road. The Velar may look large, but it doesn't feel like that from behind the wheel. So the first thing you feel is the nice, high, commanding driving position. There is ample height adjust for the seats. There's no clear view mirror in this one, which gives you the camera feed to the rear, but I really don't mind it. It's a nice, large rear view mirror and I've got good visibility of the rear as well. Uh, the one thing that I really like, and I told you, I'll tell you about it later, is that this curved screen, because of this curvature, 
even with the sunroof open on a nice hot sunny day there is no glare on this screen i can still read everything it's all legible uh, and everything is clear so that's something that's really good about this 11.4 inch touch screen as well the next gen of the PV Pro system is intuitive for volume, climate and seat adjustments. And the driver can adjust the volume from the steering as well. However, for the climate, it still requires one to look away at the screen and get into a menu to adjust blower or temperature. I would still have preferred a few physical buttons for the aircon. There is four zone climate control so passengers can individually adjust their temperatures. However, the blower speed front and rear works in sync so that cannot be individualized. For India, the Velar gets only the 2-litre Ingenium engines, which include a petrol and a diesel. The petrol produces 250 HP and 365 Nm of torque and can do the 100 in 7.5 seconds. While the diesel, which is the one that I have to drive, produces 204 HP and 430 Nm of torque. It has a mild hybrid system as well and pulls up the 100 in 8.3 seconds. Both engines are mated to an 8-speed automatic gearbox. Cabin refinement is really, really good. It really shuts the outside world outside. You can't even hear the engine. And from inside this cabin, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was a petrol and not a diesel. It is so silent and refined inside here. In fact, it's so silent inside this cabin that, uh, you know, when you do go over potholes and sharper ruts, because of the otherwise silent environment, you hear them inside the cabin. The active noise cancellation uses sensors to pick up the external vibrations and play the opposing phase sound waves and play it through the Meridian sound system. The enhanced system is capable of reducing unwanted sounds within the cabin and it works extremely well. Now, when you're chopping around in city traffic, you'll find that when you do need to get a move on and move in and out of those gaps, you will need to really step down hard and up to 1800 rpm it's a slow moving needle and then it suddenly spikes there's a surge and combined with the fact that the gearbox is sometimes snappy it can get quite jerky in traffic but once you go past that 2000 rpm mark it is all smooth sailing and then you really cruise comfortably and it builds up power quite nicely past the 2000 rpm mark below that you do feel the lag And this 8-speed gearbox loves to climb the gears. So even out on the highway, when you do want to get an urgent move on, if you're in auto, you really have to wait on it to get that move on. There are ways to circumvent that. And you can either shift it into sport, which heightens the responses and suddenly the Velar feels alive. Or you can also put it into dynamic mode. And dynamic mode actually works really well. Of course, there are the paddles too, to get that quick shift down. I like that dynamic mode because it just settles the Velar down a lot. When you are in comfort, especially on an undulating road, it tends to pitch and roll. So there is a fair bit of movement uh, because it's really soft. Uh, but putting it into dynamic really flattens it out, hunkers it down to the road more. Uh, makes it more planted. So whether it's highway or a winding section of road, that's the mode I like. The Autobox shifts up gears rapidly for efficiency and smooth cruising, which is why dropping down gears takes time. Using the paddles is necessary for overtakes and the good part is that it will hold a gear to the red line before shifting up automatically. Once in dynamic, play with the paddles and you can have quite a fun drive on a winding section of road. The Velar stays composed enough, the steering weighs up nicely and it gives you enough confidence but it's not really sharp or involving. In fact, the whole demeanour of this car is tuned more towards luxury cruising more than dynamic driving. But this is not a car for hustling. It's really a car 
for cruising around comfortably. And that's probably what most of its owners will be doing. So it's about time I hopped into the seat where most of its owners will be spending their time. Now normally in a Range Rover in the back seat you sit nice and high and you get a really good view of the front. But here in the Vela you actually sit quite low. The window line is even above my shoulder and the window area is quite small. Uh, luckily I have this massive panoramic sunroof that extends over my head. So it still feels uh, quite spacious and airy once the sunroof screen is open. But otherwise you sit quite low to the ground in this back seat. And the front seat is also quite large, so my visibility out to the front isn't really great. The seat itself is extremely comfortable. There's enough leg room for very tall people at the back here. Lots of room to stretch out your leg and good enough height even for tall people in this back seat. So space-wise, it is very comfortable. This back seat is made really for two passengers. The seats are also contoured for two. Uh, the central console comes almost all the way to the rear and there is a pretty high central tunnel. So third passenger really wouldn't be comfortable here. You can fit them in because the seat's wide enough, but leg room wise, they'd really have to sit astride this central tunnel and it's not the most comfortable place to be. The air suspension comes as standard in India to add comfort for rear seat passengers. Now, in the city, comfort mode is probably the best when you're traveling at low speeds because it really keeps it soft, smoothens out the bumps, potholes and makes it quite comfortable. But as you pick up that pace and if it's an undulating road, it feels a bit too soft and you know, with that roll and pitch that I spoke about earlier, uh, you can feel a fair bit of movement. So even in the back seat, I prefer dynamic mode, which just flattens out the ride a lot more and it doesn't make it too firm. And while this air suspension does make the ride quality good uh, and it does make it nicer and smoother and softer, it's just not quite as plush as that bigger Range Rover ride quality that we are used to. I say that because there are times when you go over sharper ruts or potholes that the Velar will thud through them, especially when you're going a little quicker. Now, while most Velar owners will be trotting around town in this one, ultimately it is a Range Rover and it does have the terrain response system. So you can do a fair bit of off-roading if you choose to. And with the ability to raise the ride height, you never have to worry where you take it. Not a lot has changed with this iteration of the Velar. It remains a tough but comfortable vehicle that is luxurious. There's no doubt that it's all about its desirable styling and the backseat experience more than the one behind the wheel. What has changed, however, is the competition with the likes of the GLE and the X5 raising the bar. So the Velar now has a tougher playing field than before. It has lifted the game in terms of its interior with its modern minimalism and it has added a few more functional features as well. While that may not be enough to take on the competition, Range Rover is still banking on the Vela's heart-tugging design to keep it in the fray. <laughs>